Hello everybody and welcome back to Loji PC and welcome back to our play by email game of War in the Pacific against Invictus. Remember you can check out his channel by going to the link down below if you want to go see the other side. So welcome back. Um, I am going to be weird and alt tab by accident here. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, yeah, it's it's all good. Um, so we are in the middle of the night and we are offloading troops around the place. So Caveng um, and Daveo are all having troops unloaded. And of course, because it's night, everything takes a little bit longer. Um, don't worry, we're not going to be doing an ASMR read of this turn. Um, just, you know, it's night, so we've got to be quiet so people can sleep. So we will see how things go um, and what we end up doing. Um, we are having our usual little, you know, shooty shoot with one another, um, submarines trying to harass destroyers and not really doing much in the way of that, um, rather frustratingly, but, you know, it, it might just mean that Invictus keeps some troops around. Now, this is the blockade of Kotobaru. Uh, we have some patrol boats here attempting to break the, uh, you know, blockade. I think is a is a is a good way to call this. Um, whether or not they are successful at the moment doesn't seem like such, um, but we can definitely see that the patrol boats are searching. Now, interestingly, what we do see here is we see that um, Invictus has his older subs, these S boats, okay, S forty one, and I think the other one was S thirty nine. Um, we got a little bit of damage on this one, um, but these are older. US submarines. Now, the thing with the older submarines, they have good torpedoes. Um, at least I think these are US. Either way, these submarines have good torpedoes. Um, these are not like the other newer US submarines with the newer torpedoes that, you know, most of the time are duds. So, him having them there is pretty kind of significant. Here we see the usual, or well, not the usual now, but our attempts to try and find this PT boat and get our revenge. Um, they're firing back because we're at a thousand yards. Again, a little bit nerve-wracking that they are, you know, so close because, you know, they, they could do some damage. You can see that it says torpedoes in the water. It's the one thing I don't want to see, you know, torpedoes in the water. Um, our destroyer does take a hit there, but, like, I think it was only with a 50 cal at most. Um, so it shouldn't be too much of a worry, but yeah, um, getting a hit on one and basically causing it to uh, explode, which is good. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we're doing very well with any of the others either, um, which is just a nightmare. The combat has extended to 5,000 yards, which you know obviously means PT boats pretty much out of range. Uh, but given their size, it's really difficult for us to hit them as well. Um, but the task force break off when it hits 10,000 yards. You can see here one of our uh, destroyers took a hit. Um, but again, I think it was only with a 50 cal, so it's it's fine. It might have a little hole in it, but it's okay. Holes on ships, that's not a problem. Um, yeah, it's all good. Um, so, because it's coming to the end of the phase, again, we have offloadings around. We also have one at Kuxing as well now, uh, which is pretty useful. Now, if we remember the last time, Kuxing was interesting because this was a group that was spotted um, by Invictus. It was spotted by some Dutch bombers. And we said, the problem with this is that if he knows it's here, if he has a submarine in the area already, he might be able to send it to, um, you know, to Kuxing to kind of block us. And when I said that, I had already recorded this turn. Um, and it's going to sound like I was prophetic. Um, I'm not, but I knew he's got a submarine there, and we will see it very soon. Uh, volume is a bit loud, so I'm just going to kind of turn it down. Um, and he's going to stay up there in the corner until it disappears. There we go. Boy. Um, so we're into the day. Things are moving forward a bit quicker, which is always nice. I like it when we get into the day. I hate the night, but hey-ho. Um, so these are the older submarines again, this time hitting an AK rather frustratingly. Doesn't seem to have been sunk, which is good. We have a more modern submarine showing how they don't work uh, by hitting our one of our patrol boats with torpedoes, but those torpedoes not going off. Um, it is a dud, so hey-ho. 
Um, we do have ships flying around on anti-submarine uh, ships, aircraft flying around on anti-submarine. Obviously, we do have ships flying around on anti-submarine, but they're flying across the waves with great speed. Um, although Japanese patrol boats, a lot of them are just converted cargo ships, so they don't move along that much. Um, so yeah, it's not necessarily fantastic. Um, so we've got a bit of a bombing raid going on Clark Field. Um, you know, we're kind of prepping this area before we get there, um, and. Interestingly, older fighters come out, okay, P-35s and P-26s, um, you know, P-26s are known as P-shooters, um, these don't really put up much of a fight against the Zeros, as you can kind of see, um, so it's kind of interesting that these get drawn out, it does make me wonder what he's done with his Warhawks um, that are there, he might have you know, withdrawn them he to kind of save the pilots and the aircraft he may have flown them elsewhere um again you know saving the squadrons um but all we know is that they're not there basically um so you know interesting at least because even though a lot of them are p40bs so not as effective as p40es um they're still you know somewhat effective so you know, they always do maybe get a bit nervous when I see Warhawks, particularly if they get into the bombers, that's when they can cause the most damage. Those 50 caliber machine guns they have are pretty reckless. Um, bombing raids throughout, but it's kind of a bit naff today. Um, you know, these air raids are pretty, pretty poor, and I'm pretty disappointed. Um, particularly with the success we had uh, in the last turn. You know, the last turn was really successful for our air raids. These ones, not so much. Uh, which is a bit of a shame, but hey ho, what are we going to do? Um, not a lot is the answer to that. Um, so, some more raids on Nan Chang. Remember last time we were getting 300? Not so much this time. Uh, attempt by the Dutch bombers again to try and hit us as we're offloading troops. Um, we managed to damage one with flak. Nothing too exciting, but yeah, you know, trying to keep an eye on these things. We don't like it. We don't like them flying around. Um, so, moving into the air operations for PM, um, again, scouting, flying around, spotting what they can. You can see there that our patrol boats are looking over those submarines, trying to break that blockade. Um, another little bit of bombing in Nanshang, this time with some Betty bombers, still some casualties. So they are doing something, but not loads. And again, this time Sally's flying over Clark Field, escorted by Zeros, which is always useful and handy. Um, drawing out those old fighters. One of the P-35s does decide to attack the Sallys as they leave, but it's guns jam, so we're all good. Um, you know, that, that's, uh, that's handy and, and, and keeps us kind of, whew, you know, wiping our brows that we don't lose any aircraft. Um, so, things have landed, and this is the prophetic thing. We can see here that there is a submarine at Kuching. The um, destroyer that was with the assault group did spot it. Um, but didn't it wasn't able to do any damage, unfortunately, which is rather frustrating. Elsewhere, our deliberate attack at Nanchang. So this is something we said last time we were going to do, just to see how we get on, due to the success of recent days on our bombing raids. Um, and this was a surprise to me. I was not expecting us to push the Chinese back um, from Nanchang. Now. They haven't crossed the river, and look at the amount of casualties they suffered here. We took 500 casualties, the Chinese took 7,900. That is a huge success for the Japanese army. In uh, Hong Kong, not fantastic, you know, two to one, but still, you know, we're making progress. Uh, and a victory there in Daveo as well, as well as Kavieng, but there's literally no one there. Um, again, this is what I mentioned last time. It's kind of interesting that there's no one there. I'm wondering what he's done with them. Um, but, you know, we are at least kind of starting our progress. Um, and, you know, we're making making some moves. Nanshang still surprised me. Um, you know, it kind of shocked me how well they did. Um, we will get them to kind of push forward and see if they can, you know, follow up that victory and maybe defeat those Chinese units. Now, obviously, we don't want to destroy Chinese units if we can help it, but at the same time, I don't want Chinese units behind my lines causing problems, taking, you know, lightly defended bases, 
and things like that. You know, we kind of want to get rid of those. Um, but obviously, we'll have to wait and see how things go. Um, something I didn't notice there, there was a couple of sub chasers that arrived in uh, Japan. Um, I'll have to get those into action very soon and perhaps send them down uh, to the South China Sea and around Malaya. So this is the AP that was hit yesterday. Um, so when I say yesterday, I always mean that last turn. Um, and it's pretty pretty badly damaged. It's moving to Saigon, and Saigon does have a repair shipyard. But I want it to go to Camran Bay, which doesn't have a repair shipyard. But what Camran Bay does have is it does have naval support. What this means is, is this ship, although it has major damage and therefore needs to go into a shipyard for repair, it can at least go to Camran Bay and get a lot of that damage taken off, anything that's not major, which then should mean it's got a much better chance to survive going to Saigon. It's not in a good shape. It's not moving very fast, and it's got a long way to go. Well, not really, but it's still got a way to go if it's going to go to, um, you know, Saigon. So, yeah, we don't really want to do that. That was the AK that was hit today. Not really that much damage, but we do need to keep an eye on it. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to just immediately send it up to uh, Saigon. It can go straight in there. I'm clicking around like an idiot here uh, for a little bit, but I get there eventually. Um, and we're just going to send this up to Saigon by itself. Um, it might run afoul of another submarine, but if it doesn't, then hey-ho. Um, so yeah, so damage tanker, probably going to be followed, but we'll see. Um, not a tanker, sorry. No, we haven't lost a tanker. Oh, don't, don't, I don't want to scare myself. Um, so, just kind of looking around, seeing what's going on. We can see these submarines, we can see what ships we've got. Just, just kind of keep an eye on stuff. Now then. Having a look at Singapore, we can see that there's still a lot of fighters in Singapore, which does put me off maybe doing some bombing raids. Um, we're going to kind of just see what we're expanding. And yeah, just kind of keep an eye on, on everything that we're doing at the moment. Um, making sure that, you know, plans are in motion. What we want our soldiers to do is happening. Um, and in particular, in the Philippines, we want to make sure that we're kind of progressing towards our targets. Um, we do have a second wave, um, these for from Legacy, um, but I do want to get up a second wave into the southern uh, island of the Philippines, Mindanao, I think that's how you pronounce it, it could be wrong. Um, we're going to use the Mura detachment uh, to do this, as well as possibly a tank regiment. Uh, there is the 8th tank regiment here, it is part of the 16th army, which is currently in Singapore. But if we get them to help us with Daveo and secure Daveo, importantly, then what this should mean is that we can, you know, um, have the Philippines under control and, you know, it allows us much better patrol air zones for our sub chasers, our patrol boats, our destroyers, as well as, you know, start to give us that movement you know there's a lot of troops in the philippines they can be used elsewhere borneo java sumatra you know new guinea onwards you know obviously depending on how things go so what i'm doing here and why i'm going to talk over this because this is quite hard to watch i'm trying to make this task force small enough uh, so it can dock uh, babladalb has a very small port at the moment and at the beginning of the game. I don't realise this because in my other game I've expanded the port of Babladalb. So I'm like, yeah, Babladalb's fine. It's big enough. I don't need to worry too much about, you know, what I'm doing. I don't need, you know, I can get some ships in there and all will be well. But no, 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 no. Um, as much as, you know, i I trying to do that and as much as I want it to happen, it just doesn't work, uh, rather unfortunately. Um, so, yeah. But, hey-ho. Um, so, what we are um, going to do, as I say, is I kind of just disband it and go, oh, fuck it, I'm just going to make an, a new task force. Um, I completely forget, as always, what the number is um, in regards to the size of ports and the size of ships. Um, so, I'm just going to make a couple of APs. I can dock these. I'm like, good. Okay, let's have a look, and I'm like, let me find, uh, and I'm looking through, and I'm thinking, do I take a naval company? And I'm like, yeah, uh, an air force company? I'm like, yeah, sure, fuck it, I'll take one, then I've got some aircraft there. And then I'm like, okay, uh, we want to take the Mura detachment, yeah, and an 8th tank regiment, select unit, and it's like, ooh, does that fit? I'm like, okay, turn troops on, 
only troops on, um, which I actually misclicked. I thought I did. Docks are full, no more room, and I'm just like, oh, I click try and get more ships again. Doesn't work. Um, I click back. We're not going to send the uh, Mura detachment just yet. We're going to send the tanks. Or are we? I still haven't made my mind up. Um, I go back in. Honestly, this is just fucking horrendous watching this. It's really, really bad. Um, when I was doing this, there was so much clicking. So if you want to skip forward maybe a minute, go ahead and I will see you in a minute. Um, yeah, trying trying our best to make this work. And I even undocked my units there. And oh, it's just... It's just horrendous. And at this point, I'm just like, well, fuck it. If I can't get the troops I want, we will undock them and we'll just load them without docking them. It's going to take longer. Fine. Whatever. Um, but now I can take everything I want to take, um, including the Mura detachment, including the tanks, and including an Air Force company so we can get some planes over, uh, you know, and see what's going on in the southern southern islands. So they're going to go up there. The 146 is already there. We're going to move that um, to the south to kind of maybe block this unit off that seems to be moving already. Um, and yeah, that will all be good. We have our construction uh, units here at Miri, which is really good. Um, I'm going to get them to expand the... I think I'm going to get them to expand the airfield. I may have, have balls this. Um, which is very possible that I've, I've balls this up. Um, we'll set these guys to, um, <laughs> when I get there, eventually to deliberate attack, trying again just to, to push forward, trying to, you know, make the most of, of our advantage. Um, and I'm going to try my best this time. Something I haven't done in the OCB game and something I kind of want to do a bit better here is try my best to keep regiments together. Um, kind of look where regiments are. So, for example, the 124th Infantry Regiment is split into three. Two of them at Camera Bay. One of them has just landed at Miri. So, if I can put them together, it's much better. You know, you upgrading them to to uh, what do you call it? Um, you know, even further to divisions is really good. Sorry, I couldn't think of the words there. And yeah, you know, while that is useful um the kind of problem with that is that you when you go to split them they only split into three a b and c which is really annoying actually if you ask me um i don't like it <laughs> um you know i don't like the way in which that works um i would love it if if you put a universe a, a you know a division together when you split it it's split down into its component parts of regiments and field artillery battalions and I know you might say, well, that needs a lot of computing power. But sure, but why do we already have those regiments? You know, we already have regiments that are split like that. Um, so surely we can have those, you know, put together again. And, you know, maybe we can, maybe we can't. Either way, it's, it's one of those things uh, that frustrates me. So we're going to move those and send them over. Uh, we can see here that our invasions of northern... Uh, New Guinea are going well, and we do have also the invasions uh, going elsewhere. Units at Tarawa picking up the, um, what you call it, the 53rd Naval Guard unit to move up to Jalut to combine with the other Naval Guard units um, to get ready for the invasion of Rabul. And we have a submarine here. Yay, submarine. Uh, let's go send it somewhere significant to go do some tasks, like sink some ships. Woo! We love sinking ships. Um, so, um, I'm thinking about where to send them. Um, I can't quite work out a good idea where to send this submarine. Um, so, it shall go about, about here. Um, no, no. No, it's not. That was my initial thought. But I thought, no, what we could do is send more submarines up to Pearl Harbor. Um, just to kind of annoy um, you know, Invictus even more. But also on the other side of Hawaii. You know, put them on the um, eastern coast of Hawaii towards the US. So that hopefully it can try and take any supplies 
or any um, you know any oil or tankers um, because of course that would be exceptionally useful um, we have some Nels here that we moved to truck um, they're on anti-submarine patrol and we can see that there's some submarines to the north rather frustratingly um, honestly the amount of um, you know submarines that he's using is, is it makes sense you know that is something you have to deal with but man oh man is it annoying um, because it, it, it just it, you, know, you just expect everything to completely go tits up um, when you see the submarines and I just never you know I would love not to deal with them but hey ho some we've got to got to handle um, so we're coming towards the end of the turn now um, so thank you very much everyone for joining us for this turn um, a bit quicker than last time um, kind of ideas in motion and that's obviously what we want to do um, so I will take this time to remind you guys to please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this um, you know the channel has been growing steadily and it's fantastic to see um, so please do help it carry on uh, as well as that please do come and join us on discord there is a link down below um, so come and join us come check out the streams as well uh, you know there's there's loads of loads of loads of PC content waiting for you elsewhere uh, and if you enjoy War and Pacific there's loads of War and Pacific content too um, so yeah so as I say that's always useful but until next time guys thank you very much for joining us and I'll see you very very soon bye